Hello, my name is Dr. Ravi Gandhi. I'm a board certified neurosurgeon who specializes in cerebrovascular neurosurgery, skull-based neurosurgery, and brain tumors. Amongst my specialties is acoustic neuromas, which I'm here to talk about today. Acoustic neuromas are a benign type of brain tumor, which are better called vestibular schwannomas. The two terms can be interchanged. A vestibular schwannoma is a benign tumor that grows behind the ear and most commonly affects patients by causing things such as hearing loss, tinnitus, which is ringing in your ears, or sometimes weakness, facial weakness, headaches. Vestibular schwannomas constitute about 10% of all brain tumors. So if you have been diagnosed with an acoustic neuroma, this may cause a great deal of stress or anxiety. One of the things to be confident in is that this is in fact a benign tumor. There are other tumors in this location that can sometimes imitate an acoustic neuroma. Even most of those tumors are usually benign. Once we have found the diagnosis of an acoustic neuroma, which is most commonly diagnosed either on a CT scan because a patient was having asymmetric hearing loss or on an MRI, the next step is discussing the options for management. One of the most common options for management is no surgery or treatment at all. What this entails is getting periodic MRIs or CT scans to evaluate for growth of these tumors. Again, these are slow growing tumors and will on average grow about one millimeter per year. If we were to notice that there was a slightly higher than that rate of growth, we may then consider intervening on this type of tumor. The other times in which we would consider surgical options or the alternative, which is radiation, would be if the tumor is causing symptoms. Some of the symptoms that we would consider intervening for would be things such as weakness, uh, which could be weakness in the body, facial weakness, or progressive hearing loss. Regardless of what size your tumor is or what rate of growth, it is always important to understand that there are options when it comes to treatment. We like to take into consideration each patient individually, that is patient-specific factors such as age, size of tumor, other medical conditions, to tailor the treatment specifically to each individual. I think in managing these types of tumors, it's very important to have patients intimately involved in the decision-making process. That includes my job, which is to educate you about the tumor itself, showing, showing the images and the characteristics of your tumor, educating you on the expectations of each of the potential treatment options and helping you to be involved in that decision-making process. So not every patient needs surgery for acoustic neuromas. However, once the decision has been made to proceed with surgery, either because of tumor growth, size, or symptoms, we have options for how we may proceed with surgery. The most common option is by going behind the ear. Sometimes we may take a different approach by going above the ear. In any event, we always try to choose the option that has the least morbidity through the smallest opening and least invasive method possible. We use special tools such as neuronavigation to help pinpoint the tumor, to help us become more efficient and safer during surgery. We also oftentimes will use a team approach. This surgery is often performed both by a neurosurgeon such as myself, al along with a ear, nose, and throat surgeon or a neurootologist. This team approach helps to be sure that all of the expertise necessary are in the room for the surgery. So some of the most common questions I get asked when I am discussing with a patient who has recently been diagnosed with an acoustic neuroma, is this genetic? Although there are genetic variations of acoustic neuromas, it is very uncommon. One of the genetic diseases that is associated with acoustic neuromas is something called neurofibromatosis. Most families that have a history of neurofibromatosis would have known this in advance, but certainly during the evaluation for the acoustic neuroma, we would look for other stigmata of neurofibromatosis. So in case you have heard rumors that acoustic neuromas or vestibular schwannomas can be caused by cell phone usage, this has not been proven in the literature. If you've been diagnosed with an acoustic neuroma and a decision has been made to proceed with surgery, this is usually not a surgery that needs to happen in an emergent fashion. This is an elective surgery for the purpose of trying to remove all of the tumor. 
The expectations of surgery are that we're going to go in to take out the tumor. Some of the risks, the most common risks and concerns of surgery are damage to the facial nerve which would, could leave somebody with facial weakness. In today's time period with new technology and advanced surgical technique, the risk of facial paralysis after surgery is very low. Between myself and my team, we have very good success at preserving the facial nerve during surgery. For information about vestibular schwannomas, please visit our website.